everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Sharon and in today's video I'm going to be doing a really quick intro to Framer so if you don't know how to use Framer this is an amazing place to start I'm gonna go over the basics of Framer and just how to get comfortable in it if you don't know what Framer is Framer is one of the coolest no code design tools these days and you can use it to design as you would in Figma as well as to host your website it's awesome for designers to host their portfolios as well as for other purposes like blogging, e-commerce, websites, and all sorts of other purposes. So if you're new to Framer and you don't know where to start, this is the perfect place. So in today's video, we are going to be creating a very simple hero section. It is going to be the first part in a series where we're going to create landing pages using Framer. So without wasting any more time, let's get into today's video. So when you download and set up Framer, this is basically how it looks. So the first thing you're going to be able to look at is your projects, past projects that you've worked on. If you don't have any, then this will be more or less blank. You can create a new project by clicking here. You can also invite people on your team, go through your archives. Framer does also have a really great community. So it has a lot of resources and discussions that you can join that are super helpful. So when you enter into the actual Framer file, either by opening an existing file or creating a new one. This is what it looks like. So I'm going to show you around in a bit, right? So if you've worked with Figma before, this is quite similar. So your knowledge of Figma is very much transferable to Framer. And you can actually copy designs from Figma to Framer using the Figma to Framer plugin. So it's very helpful to do that. So the starting up with the left side of your screen, you can look at your, so the first by default, you always have the home page created for you. You can create more pages, it can be a regular page, can even do a folder or CMS, which is for blogging. Uh, you also have layers. So I do have a couple of layers that are not in frame right now. Uh, you have your assets. Assets are just, you know, same as in Figma, your components, reusable components that you want to make use of throughout your design or your project. So I'm just going to leave it on pages. Then here you have insert. Framer is so cool because they do have embedded like templates that you can use. So for landing page, portfolio, blogs, like there are so many templates that you can add in and customize. They also have pre-made sections. So for things like pricing, contacts, FAQs, and all of that, you also do have a pre-made nav bar or nav bars that are fully editable, of course, but you know, really easy to work with if you're trying to save some time. This is for the CMS section, which we're not covering in this video, but we will in subsequent ones. And then we also have elements, which are things that Framer has pre-made that you can add in that are like really cool stuff. So we have different, you know, patterns, grids, and so on. You can also embed stuff like videos, YouTube, you can even do forms, connect to Calendly, HubSpot. We also have like a library of emojis, memojis, icons, illustrations. Uh, you can add in slideshows, carousels, you know, all sorts of cool stuff. After this, we have the layout. So you can add in rows, columns, grids, image videos. You have your text, CMS, which we spoke about earlier. And then you can also do specific actions. So uh, Framer does have an AI aspect to it where you can like type in what you want it to create and it generates. Framer does have an AI aspect to it where you can type in what you want and it will generate a website for you. I'm a bit more old fashioned, so I prefer to do it manually. This section is just like your name, the name of the account. You can do some language changes through the localization. There's settings and invitations. And then if you click on this play, this is how you get to preview what your website looks like. But ours looks like nothing right now because there's nothing there. And then you can publish it to a particular URL. And yep, here is showing you a kind of tutorial for the next things you want to do. But if you uh, click on the frame that you have here, then you have like more options and more of the UI that you might be familiar with, with the most design tools. So getting started, I do have a couple of things that I have copied in for ease. I'm just going to walk you through them. So I had a couple of colors that I added in just by creating a frame, which you can do here. So you can create a frame here and then I set the color to what I wanted. So I have some text that I copied in. You hit. T and you can type in. And then I have a bunch of 
logos that I put in a frame, which is just images lined up and then an image that I imported here as well. So we're going to be working with some of these elements. So I'm going to drag the colors over here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm imagining that this hero section is very much so dark theme. So I'm going to change this to match this color. I prefer to create dark themed stuff. Of course, when you design, you do it according to what you want. And then after that, I'm going to add in some rows. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So when you click on that, you can do that. And then it's technically created two rows for you. Now the way Framer works is similar to Figma is we have auto layout, which here is just called layout. So right now, the way my page is set up, all you have to do is add in layout. So if I want to take it out, I do the minus to add it. It's like this. So we have what we call a stack and then we can choose the direction, the alignment and all of that. So it's the same for, let's go to our layers. It's the same for this stack that we just added in here. So I want to, so here we can see the size right now. It has a fixed width and a fixed height. Right now, I would prefer for the width to be fill, so it takes up the full length and for the height to fit the content, which is just means that as it as you add in more stuff, it adjusts, right? The next thing I want to do is I want to take out the colors here because we don't want those colors. And so for this top row, I'm going to use that for our image. So I'm just going to do command C, click into this frame here. So this frame, which is part of the stack, doesn't yet have auto layout added in. So I'm just going to add that in. I'm going to also do the height. It ha doesn't have any content right now, so it can't fit content, but I'm going to leave that as fill. And then I'm just going to command V. So we have that in there. And right now it's at the center. So I want to put it at start, which is going to push it all the way to the, to the edge. I'm going to add in some padding to the entire stack. Actually, I'm going to add in some padding to the right and let's say 40 and then to the left as well. So we see that moving in. Actually, I think I want a bit more padding and make that 60 and 60 as well. So this is going to be for our image. So I can add that in and this lower frame here is going to be for our text. So I'm going to do the same thing here, which is adding in the layout. So it behaves as a stack. And then this is where I'm going to add in some text. So I do have some text here. It's not in the font or size that I want. So I'm going to add in my text here. As you can see, it's like really small. So I'm going to, you have styles here, by the way. So if I wanted to add in a style, I could, and I would just name this, I don't know, white and create that. So now this has a style called white and align this to the top as well, because right now it's center line. Cool. So I want to change the font here to something a lot more interesting. I'm going to go to my, so I'm going to change this to DM Sans. I'm going to make this really bold. And seeing as this is for the web, I'm going to make this say 45. And actually going to copy this text here and paste that in. So it is black. So we're going to change that to, to white. So I actually changed my mind and I don't want to use that font anymore. So we're going to set this one to say 45. So let's just say this is like my heading. So for this text, I want two lines of text. So I'm going to duplicate this. So as you can see, it's going completely into the other side. So I'm going to have to make some changes to the behavior of this particular frame. So here, what the issue is, is the direction that it's going in. I don't want it to go all the way down. I want it to stack. So once I change it, the direction, so this is exactly what I want. So this one is going to have a different font. So I'm just going to copy this text that we have here. I'm going to go in here and paste this. The width here should be fill. So once we set it to fill, it goes into the fill of the parent frame that it's in. And I'm going to select all of this text here and change this to DM Sans. And of course, reduce the size to, let's say, 35. So as we can see, this is all kind of starting to take shape. One thing that I want to do actually is increase the, the size of this. I want it to be like big. 
So I'm gonna, as you can see, it's cutting out again for this one. So I'm just gonna set this to fill and not fit. And then here we're having a similar problem. So the height of this one, the height of the frame where the text is, we need to make that fit content, content so that grows. So, yep, this is essentially what our design is looking like. And so right now what I wanna do next is I want to add in a navigation. So I'm gonna go into navigation and I'm gonna drag in this guy. We're gonna customize it so that it fits, but this is also to show you about components and how components work. So if you double click this, this is gonna take you into the components library for this particular component, which is called navigation. Now I already have a, another navigation that I've added in. So that's why it's showing like navigation copy. So we can actually go in and customize this as much as, as much as we want. So we can increase the spacing, for example, between the logo. And if we come here, we can see that that has changed. So another thing I wanna do is I wanna create an effect where you can see that scrolling, right, of like logos. I've always thought that that was super cool. So I have a bunch of logos that I have added in here using the same stack tool that I showed you earlier. And I've used it to stack them all. So you can see they are going in this direction and using all these images that I added in, if I wanna swap them out, I can. These are SVG formats, but if I wanted to, I could also use a PNG format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to insert. I'm going to go under interactive and I'm going to add in something called a ticker. And then you're going to select the children. You're going to click on add, choose. And I have logos two, which is the name of this. So it connects to that. And I'm going to make this a little bit, a little bit wider. I don't know if I want to do fill. Yeah, I think I'll do fill and let's see. So let's actually play what we have so far. So yeah, this is all coming together quite nicely. We can go back and edit this if we want to make it a bit slower. So this is at 100 per, so yeah, that makes it a bit slower, which I think is, I think is nicer. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna go in and edit our menu. So I'm gonna type in here, let's say, uh, his name is, the name of the person is uh, Alexis. So I'm gonna reduce that to 40 so that I can um, replace the, the icon here. So I'm gonna copy this and go into this specific place here and click on Command V, there we go. And then I can delete the, the logo. Framer is also pretty cool because you can have different variants. So these are all technically variants of this and you can use it to, you can use it to create your different versions for uh, whichever, if it's mobile or web as you prefer. So we're gonna take this in and maybe make some updates here. Maybe we can say this is my work and projects. Maybe we can say this is my work and maybe this is about me. For this one, maybe we can say this is contact me. Maybe we can say this is explorations and then we can delete that one. So this is how our menu is looking. And this is all just from Framer's original assets or its original template that we just edited that out. So if I wanna change in some colors here, maybe I wanna make, I wanna highlight certain things. So I can select this. Uh, select the text. Right now it's on white and I want to create a new style and call this green and I wanted to take this color and we can create it. And so designing experiences with data and aesthetics. Another thing I don't really like with this particular text here is that it's a bit choked up and so if I want to adjust that I can increase the line height there. So let's take a look at how our website is looking so far. It's all coming together quite nicely. If we want to as well, we can add in a bit more, a bit of padding. So I've added in some 12 on each side. So that pushes this in a little bit more, which I think is a lot better than it being all on the edge. So if we want to make this responsive, we can add in some breakpoints. So I'm gonna add in a breakpoint for the phone, but already you can see this doesn't look so bad. 
at all actually. So one thing we're going to do is first of all, we're going to adjust the height of the overall frame for the tablet. Right now it's fixed. I wanna make it fit content so it grows with the content. And then we can select our text here. It's quite big. So we can reduce this maybe to 40 and the lower text that we have here, we can reduce to, okay, 20 is a bit small. We can say 24 instead. And another thing that's affecting the appearance is the padding that we have. So we can reduce this to say a padding of 20. Yep. And if we click on this, we have the menu and we can see how it looks. I also think that for a mobile, this is quite big. So I'm gonna reduce this and I'm gonna adjust the height here as well to fit the content. So it closes up a little bit. And then here I'm gonna add some padding to the top so that there's some more breathing space and if we check this out this looks already so much better so guys i hope you enjoyed today's video this is a quick intro and this is how to design on framer one thing to always keep in mind with framer is you want to make sure that you make as many changes on the desktop first before you go into the smaller breakpoints to make changes but all in all it's a super easy to use and customize platform for your websites as well as for your designs. Thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful, please do not forget to support me by liking, sharing, commenting, and of course, subscribing to my channel. I do have a lot more content regarding framework coming up. This is the first episode and I'm gonna do more content regarding Framer, how to set it up and how to design landing pages and portfolios in Framer. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.